Hey guys, Table here. Today we're checking out the new Tier 8 uh, Italian battleship, Lepanto. Pablo on the screen there. We got secondaries all day, every day. And there's the ship. We did actually put the Epic Reload mod on there for the secondaries. Haven't boosted the rest of the ship though. We still got a couple mods to unlock, so this isn't fully uh, upgraded yet. But, it, you know, it's a short fill game. What's going on here? Well, it is a good look at the... Uh, power of this fully armed and operational battle station in action. I'm already going to put out a lot of damage here. And it's a pretty interesting uh, finish to consider from a strategy standpoint. So it's got uh, the things I care about, which is strategy, and it's also got uh, things you guys care about, which is how much damage cause it, can this thing do. So <laughs> it's got it all. Stay tuned. All right, so we're moving in here uh, to ACAP on the Land of Fire Domination Mode and Lepanto. All right, now, Withering Secondary Attack, of course, it's an SAP secondary, different than your typical secondary attack, which a lot of the damage typically from something like, uh, or what is it, a Rupric or whatever, Prince Rupric, uh, you'll get some raw damage, certainly, but a lot of the damage will be from fires and uh, things of that nature. You're not going to get that on here, uh, but as you'll see, when the secondaries are going to be shredding people in this game, uh, the damage value is quite high, so there's a little bit of a trade-off. I might do a deeper dive uh, comparing this compared to something like the Rupik here in the next uh, little while, so uh, stay tuned to see if I get around to doing that or not. But uh, it's an interesting question, which one's the king of the Tier 8 secondaries? I think a lot of people playing them both might pick this one. All right, I think it's a, more of a vicious attack. I don't, I'm not quite there yet. I still got to play a little bit more of this and uh, think about it a little bit more. Um, but nevertheless, kind of the tactic here is if you're getting spotting from your team and, uh, you know, you can move into an aggressive position like we're doing here, me and this Alaska both noticing the only defender over here, Yamato, turning around. So we're going to aggressively push the cap, try and capture the base as quick as possible. Um, but let's say something spotted me. Well, if I got spotting on my team, I can kind of move forward until I start to feel the heat. Then I can pop the smoke, and if my secondaries are going off... Um, and we're in range of that stuff, we can pile on the damage. And as long as we're not firing the main guns, which of course is going to uh, activate our smoke fire penalty, um, which basically makes us nearly as detectable as if we were uh, outside of the smoke. You know, as, as long as we don't fire the main guns with a line of sight, like there, the Yamada was blocked by the island, so we didn't get spotted. But, uh, you know, you can sit in that cloud long enough to kill a lot of things, especially destroyers, if you can get them close range. So we're probably going to see that as the game goes on here. All right, so here we are. We captured A, they captured B. I want to move aggressively horizontally into B, right? Basically uh, full speed ahead. I want to attack that Yamato, which is broadside to me, and the destroyer. I'd love to get my destroyer south to B, spotting him. My secondary is ripping the destroyer to shreds, and my main gun's killing the Yamato for a nice juicy double strike. The problem is there he is on the map and we immediately react with the smoke. The crossfire threat to the north, Yamato, and this is kind of what battleship positioning is in a lot of ways, is the threat from moving one from one spot to another. Now if all your ships are clumped up in one space, especially if they're too far away to shoot, uh, that threat doesn't exist. But that guy being where he is, if I don't have that smoke I probably am short about thirty or 40,000 health right now, okay? So just like this guy is going to be as soon as we slap him with this thing right here. Uh, but we get that island in between me and the north uh, word Yamato, and we strike that Yamato over there with a vicious shot, and he's going to be feeling that one for as long as he's alive, which isn't going to be long. Because look at these damage hits here. We've activated the secondary mod. Look at the accuracy when you turn that puppy on here. And the damage piles up, and this guy is not even aware of what's going on. His guns are, he's shooting southward. He has no idea who the hell's beating the living snot out of him. But it's me over here. I'm the dude. You got 90,000 health. I got uh, 89,000 damage. That's right. I'm the one who rung that guy's bell. He had no idea what was going on. <laughs> and that's the power of this thing. All right. You can combine this vicious main gun attack, which is nice. Uh, the accuracy feels pretty good to me, especially compared to some of the uh, earlier iterations of the Italian battleships, especially the, uh, whatever the campaign reward one was, the Roma. That thing could never really hit anything. But this thing, I have no problems uh, tickling the sides of people. And you combine the attacks, the secondaries and the main guns, oof, 
You got problems. All right, so Shima to the south. We got to expect Torps, right? He's either torping the guy to his southeast and my southeast, coincidentally, or me. Well, I'm just going to have to assume it's me because I don't really care about the Burgogni. It uh, doesn't look like he's long for the world anyways. Um, but I got a lot of health and I got plays to make. But the problem is we still got the Amato in the north here, and I got to be kind of thinking about him as well. So I'm hoping to get around this little peninsula turn northward before this happens. Oof. And so I just started the turn there, and now I kind of want to turn the other way because if we turn to the right, the back end of the ship will turn away from the torps, giving me a little bit more time to dodge. Uh, so we got a little bit unlucky there with the timing. Didn't really do too much. I mean, we had full health up to there, or nearly full health, whatever it was. So we lost a good chunk, but nothing we can't handle. And meanwhile, the uh, Alaska's moved into a uh, flanking position on this guy. So the Amato, who previously was kind of pinning me from really making strong, aggressive movements, now he's being, uh, I don't know if he got caught by surprise or if he's just a uh, broadside player. <laughs> which a lot of them are at this tier, but uh, anyways, he's sitting there broadside to an Alaska. He's not going to last long. I'm trying to steal the kill slash make sure he can't shoot at our partner up there because we're down a ship and we're going to need all the HP we can get, but nevertheless, Alaska finishes him off. We do remain spotted. We got nothing spotted on the map. We got problems with the destroyer. So I'm going to keep asking this guy for help, which in my mind means spot these destroyers who have been relentlessly throwing torpedoes at me before they sink me and uh, you're on your own after that and you're gonna have a hard time uh, he, he's confused as to what I want he'll do circles around us for a little while and then eventually he'll put a smoke down Minotaur well who doesn't love to shoot a Minotaur Ooh, baby well we got some damage here but we got to get away from this guy pull forward get the silent in between me and him and again we're still being spotted here so we got a destroyer somewhere we know we got one I'm gonna try and Say, hey, you know, check this out on the map here. This is where I need you to go. If we got to hold your hand here at Legendary Tier, uh, the tier for the most experienced players, quote-unquote. Uh, they have no idea what we're, we need to do. There's also a guy on A, uh, another destroyer. I don't know which one it is, right? We got one last scene spotted south of us. That could be him. Or there's another destroyer uh, that heretofore is yet to be spotted by anyone. So uh, here's more torpedoes. I'm getting a little fed up at this point in time, but uh, nothing we can do at this point. We do have to drop the smoke, and here he comes with the help. He's actually going to put more smoke down in front of us. It seems like a waste at first, especially if he's going to be in the smoke with us, but eventually he will uh, go out to spot. And here's kind of the play we would like to make with this thing. As long as we're not shooting these main guns, keep them silent. Don't let that ADD kick in here. You're going to need the stealth because he's in range we're going to pop that secondary here and once again palmer Ooh, baby now maybe we get a juicy shot on the ship that deserves to be shot right or maybe uh well the situation forces us to change our play you always got to be reacting to the situation on the ground but for a little while here now uh, we can blast that guy but here's a change right here shima well he's a much more higher priority target and we're willing to leave the smoke. Previously, 10 seconds ago, we were going to drop anchor, rain down on the Palmer until the smoke dissipated, and then we would finish them off with the main guns. But we got to get the Shima, right? Late game, got to get these destroyers whenever they spotted. Here's another one, another Shima. And uh, once again, we want to capitalize and get both of these. I'm willing to trade the Lepanto for both destroyers, absolutely, even though um, whether or not I trust my teammates or not, well, most games I don't. In fact, unless... <laughs> division with a couple of guys that I've played with before. Usually I don't trust my teammates that much unless it's a member stream, but we're actually going to see the team finish the game off at the end. We're going to stick around to see the end of this here, but angling against the Palmer in here, aware that we're turning broadside towards the Shima, who's probably going to have torps loaded pretty quickly. That thing loads quick enough that you got to feel nervous all the time around a Shima, uh, but I can't take any more main gun shots to the broadside, uh, point blank range. We're going to aim here, try and knock some guns out of possible, or if not, we'll just get vicious strikes like that, and we'll see if we can knock this guy out before we get uh, nuked. At this point in time, Torps are definitely coming in, and there he is. Activate him. We want him to be the priority target. He is letting some of the non-essential crew off on that island there. No real good docking facilities. It's kind of a cliff, so they only get the cook off and maybe a couple maintenance guys. Down goes the ship. Uh, they didn't get that much crew off. But they did get this follow-up strike on us. Now, I'm trying to dodge. That's a mistake right there because the guns are loaded right now. We're going to go down anyways, probably. I was like, well, 
this would be a dope dodge if we can pull this off. But it would have been even cooler for me and the team if I would have killed the Palmer in there. Because the Palmer shoots there, so this is damage that he shouldn't have gotten. 10,000 damage, not a huge problem. All right, but it's something to consider and just a little bit of an error here. So now we're going to watch the you know the following two, three minutes of this game because it's fairly interesting from a strategy standpoint. Uh, Palmer versus Alaska. Alaska, more health, more firepower, more armor, more everything. Advantage Alaska. Drop the anchor here. Make sure you capture the base or at least keep it frozen, right? Scoring in the background, currently tied with this cap contested. I think he's trying to stop here, but I think he's like, okay, I'm squirting off. I might as well get some speed so I can dodge Torps, but it's unfortunate. I, if I was playing that, I would have just stayed stopped and hoped that the Torps weren't coming or hoped to dodge him because I think he could stand even one Torp hit there. But nevertheless, he does the right thing. All right, we're down two caps. Uh, we're up 70 points, 65, 70, 75, whatever it is I can't add. Um, but there's enough time in the game. It's a little hard to see behind that. Uh, cloud right now the scoreboard's right on top of the cloud but i think we got about four and a half to five minutes right now and if the minotaur just doesn't die and this dude uh chases them let's say the minotaur goes to the a10 square the northeast corner of the map if this guy ignores the scoring and chases them which a lot of players would do absolutely uh, we lose that game right despite being up at this moment so he elects to turn around go to a it did cost us 30 or 40 points turning around like that, but it is the correct play here. Very good decision making there. Um, now Minotaur is forced to counter this, right? Because there's still enough time um, to, you know, if we'll for sure win. I mean, we we got the lead, right? He knows that. So even if we uh, freeze the cap here and somehow he reset us every 30, 40 seconds, we would still win on score, right? So the Minotaur is forced to react to this. Uh, they're no longer, a moment ago, they were going to win the game. If nothing else changed, now they're not going to win the game. Um, Minotaur does counter this play, and this is a play you want to look for opportunities to make or look for opportunities to prevent uh, when you're playing this game. Is if, okay, I'm going to this cap here. If the enemy immediately or close to immediately gets on another cap, that cancels the play out, right? You're both going to take a minute to flip the caps, and essentially no scoring change will occur so it's a good defensive play to get on b and, and necessary right so once again uh if nothing else changes here except for each team captures the base that they're contesting right now red would still win the game right you can see they're uh, catching up on score here so the play the minotaur needs to make is to uh try and flee to the east somehow um, and unfortunately for him he discharged the smoke moving into the cap that was a catastrophic error that ends up costing him the game but let's say he turns around and captures the base and as he captures uh he goes to the northeast and eventually gets behind those islands now i think they probably it's still going to be close right because the alaska is moving in here and th this is a small enough map that he can actually get on that uh base quickly and uh contest so there's a lot of this is why this thing can be interesting when the players are actually trying to win the game right you can see the complexity of the situation how much time is it going to take me to do this can i get a reset here can i you know do this or that uh so you know the minotaur i don't even think now i'm thinking about it, i don't even think he can run away and win the game i think he's forced to confront the alaska and the only way the minotaur is going to beat the alaska point blank range is to catch him with the surprise torp coming around here you know so maybe i would get tight behind that island use the sonar keep him spotted and try and blast him with the torp is really the only chance he had uh, in retrospect. So pretty interesting finish there. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the game and the look at the Lepanto. Uh, if you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of other warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, link below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you all later. All right, peace.